The United East India Company, more commonly known as VOC, from its Dutch acronym Verenigde Oostindische Compagnie, was established in 1602, marking the dawn of the corporate age. In the same year, the States General of the Netherlands granted it a 21-year monopoly to carry out colonial activities in Asia. The VOC was the first company in history to issue bonds and shares of stock to the general public, which allowed the company to raise capital for its expansion and made it the world's first true multinational corporation. The creation of the VOC was a strategic move by the Dutch Republic to consolidate its trading enterprises in Asia into a single, powerful entity capable of competing with other European powers. The VOC was endowed with unprecedented powers, including the authority to wage war, negotiate treaties, coin money, and establish colonies. Perhaps the most notable figure associated with the VOC was Jan Petersoon Cohen, appointed as the Governor General of the Dutch East Indies in 1618. He is best remembered for his aggressive expansionist policies and the establishment of Batavia, modern Jakarta, as the administrative capital of the Dutch East Indies. Cohen, without hesitation, used military force to secure VOC monopolies and had a ruthless approach towards indigenous populations. However, the company's actions weren't only ruthless towards locals, but also towards their European competitors. The Amboina Massacre in 1623 involved the torture and execution of several English East India Company traders by the VOC on the island of Amboina in the Moluccas. The massacre severely damaged Dutch-English relations and heightened tensions between the two trading powers. It had a long-lasting impact on the English public's perception of the Dutch and indirectly influenced the naval conflicts between England and the Netherlands throughout the 17th century. The Vox efforts to secure spice-producing regions led to violent confrontations with local rulers and other European powers, but it also allowed the company to achieve incredible wealth and influence. One of the most significant wars that the VOC fought in the 17th century was against Portugal. Spanning over six decades, this conflict was crucial in determining the VOC's control over the spice trade. The war saw the VOC engaging in numerous battles against the Portuguese in the Indian Ocean and the East Indies, eventually leading to the Dutch capturing key Portuguese fortresses and trading posts in the region. The VOC's influence extended far beyond the Spice Islands, establishing a vast network of trading posts and colonies that spanned from the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa to the islands of Japan. This was made possible by ambitious and decisive individuals like Anthony Van Diemen, the Governor General of the Dutch East Indies from 1636 to 1645. Van Diemen was responsible for expanding VOC's influence in India, China, and Japan. He also initiated explorations that led to the discovery of parts of Australia, Tasmania, and New Zealand. During his leadership, Batavia also experienced rapid development and became the hub of Dutch power in Asia, overseeing operations that included not only the spice trade, but also the trade in silk, tea, and porcelain from China, textiles from India, and sugar from its colonies. Van Diemen's tenure saw the VOC grow in power and reach, contributing to its golden age. By the 18th century, the VOC's fortunes began to wane. Mismanagement, corruption within its ranks, and fierce competition from the British East India Company, among others, eroded its financial foundation. The nail in the coffin for the company was the Dutch defeat in the Fourth Anglo-Dutch War. British naval blockades and the capture of Dutch territories weakened the VOC's economic position irreparably, which led to the company's bankruptcy. In 1799, after nearly two centuries of dominance, the VOC was dissolved, and its assets and debts were taken over by the Dutch government. The VOC's legacy is complex. On one hand, it was a pioneering force in the globalization of trade and finance, laying the groundwork for the modern corporations. On the other hand, its practices of colonial exploitation and its impact on indigenous populations are subjects of criticism and reflection. The VOC's history serves as a testament to the transformative power of commerce, for better and for worse, and its role in shaping the world as we know it today.